All right, folks, another day of math, another day to have fun doing it. Um, yesterday, we looked at what? Multiplying rational numbers and dividing, which didn't turn out to be so bad, I hope. Um, just remember your rule, or I guess um, the rules, if the signs are the same when you're multiplying like two positives or two negatives, then your answer is going to be positive. And the only time your answer is going to be negative is if you are multiplying or dividing and you have one of each number, one positive and one negative. So today we're going to take that skill uh, and pair that with your um, adding and subtracting skills as well. And we're going to be evaluating expressions with rational numbers. So not solving equations, nothing where you have to find out what the variable is equal to. Instead, we're going to be using good old order of operations to uh, evaluate an expression and find out the, the most simplified answer. So without further ado, let's do this. Order of operations, um, as I'm sure all of you are super well aware of, uh, we use P for parentheses, E for exponents, uh, multiplication and division are next, and addition and subtraction are last. And I, I usually write PEMDAS this way because PEMDAS, uh, the P parentheses comes first no matter what, then we look for any exponents in the problem, that's second. Multiplication and division, it doesn't matter which one comes first, you just work in that uh, order left to right. So if there is multiplication and division in a problem, you don't multiply before you divide necessarily. You do whatever one comes first in the left to right order and then the second one. Same with addition and subtraction. You work from left to right. So if both addition and subtraction are in a problem, you just do whatever comes first left to right and then do the second thing. Uh, so let's take this basic problem. There actually are no negatives in here, but let's just do a quick recap of PEMDAS. Um, in this problem, I noticed that there is parentheses so that's the first thing I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna just rewrite the problem. Uh, and the parentheses, nine divided by three, gets me three. Uh, next thing is there's multiplication. There's actually two instances of multiplication, six times three and four times three. I'm gonna knock those out on the same step. So six times three is 18, and four times three is 12, and then my final answer here would be 30. And that's what we should get. No matter who's doing the problem, 30 is the correct final answer. Um, let's take that a little bit further and throw some negatives in. So somewhat short problem here. We got four divided by, and then in parentheses, the sum of five and negative seven. So since there's parentheses, I'm gonna be doing the parentheses first. And I've got five plus negative seven, which is negative two. No matter how you look at that, um, the seven, which is negative, is larger in absolute value than the five, and seven minus five is two, and therefore my answer is negative. And so my last step is gonna to be to divide four by negative two. And a positive divided by a negative yields a negative answer, and four divided by two is simply two. So the correct final solution to this expression, uh, you can simplify this all the way down to negative two. That's the best possible answer. Let's, let's do one more. Find the value of this expression when x is equal to eight and when y is equal to negative four. So in the expression, I've got x divided by 2y. Um, when you have something that kind of looks like a fraction, like it's in fraction form, that's just uh, another way to write division. So again, this is x divided by 2y. And when I have a number next to a variable or two things right next to each other, that's multiplication. So 2 times y. So my first step is I'm going to substitute in. I'm going to substitute 8 in for x divided by and then I'm gonna substitute in for the y, my negative four. And the reason I'm putting it in parentheses is just to highlight the fact that it's negative, make it stick out. That's not parentheses like PEMDAS parentheses. Um, all right, so eight divided by two 
times negative 4. So let's do, uh, let's do this 2 times negative 4 first, just to simplify the bottom of this, and we'll rewrite the expression as 8 divided by negative 8. All right, and then 8 divided by 8 is 1, but since it's a positive divided by a negative, it's negative 1. And that's your best possible solution there. And I guess I should backtrack real quick. One thing to remember, um, when you see a division problem written in this format, you have to do whatever's on the bottom first. Although there's no parentheses around the 2 times negative 4, this bottom quantity is what we are dividing. It's not 8 divided by 2. It's 8 divided by this product. So this whole thing has to get done first, which is why I did this first and got negative 8, and then I did 8 divided by negative 8. So um, when you see a problem written in this format, I know I've pointed it out before, but I'd like to just reiterate, you have to do the bottom first as if it's its own problem. And then once the bottom is simplified as much as possible, then you can, as a last step, divide your top by your bottom. So make sure you've simplified everything on the top and everything on the bottom, and then you can divide once you have one top and one bottom uh, value. So the only other thing for today is uh, we have to point out a very important reminder when you are using order of operations with integers. And in particular, it's the E in PEMDAS, exponents. Exponents, um, when you have negative numbers involved, be can become a little tricky if you don't know uh, one or two basic things. So I'm going to point this out today. This is like the seeing who can really put this together, who's paying attention, because you will get totally different answers if you don't follow this rule. So um, break this down into scenario. Scenario one, I've got the quantity, negative 4, it's set apart in parentheses, to the second power. So remember, uh, the base is the number that is being multiplied. The exponent tells you how many times to multiply the number. So what this means is the quantity, negative 4, multiplied by itself twice. So negative 4 to the second power means negative 4 times negative 4, which is going to get me positive 16. Negative times a negative is a positive, and 4 times 4 is 16. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, let's look at one more. We've got negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, because it's the base, negative 3, multiplied by itself three times. So negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So this right here, 3 times 3, is positive 9 times negative 3, which is negative 27. So please pay attention when you have an exponent. And here's one quick little rule. Maybe it'll help you. This is always true, which is why I'm pointing it out. Anytime you have an even number exponent, so anytime your, your exponent is an even number, to the second power, to the fourth power, to the sixth power, to the eighth power, that's an even number, then your final value is going to be positive. And on the other hand, anytime you have an odd number exponent, your final value is going to be negative. So to the first power, to the third power, to the fifth power, to the second power, anytime that's the case, your final value is going to be negative. But that's not even the real, the real issue. The real issue that we have to talk about is scenario two. So the last thing for today is going to seem little and insignificant, but it makes a big difference in your final answer. If we were sitting together, I'd show you this problem and I'd ask you, how does this problem differ 
from these two up here. What's the difference in the way that these two are written and the way that this one is written? And hopefully you'd be quick to notice that the big difference is these top two problems have parentheses around the base, whereas there are no parentheses around the base in scenario two. And that seems like A, it's a little thing that doesn't matter, B, how's it going to affect the answer? Well, it actually greatly affects the answer. When you see something with no parentheses around the base and there is an exponent, what that is saying is the opposite of four to the third power. What do I mean by that? The negative sign here is not included in what is being put to the power. So I'm not doing negative four times negative four times negative four in this scenario. In this scenario, I am simply doing four times four times four, and whatever my final answer is, I am going to give the opposite of that. That's what the negative sign is saying here. So four times four is 16 times four is 64, and I'm going to be giving the opposite of 64, which is negative 64. So anytime you have a base that is not in parentheses, then the negative sign is acting as the opposite of. And if you're paying close attention, then that means any time, any time, I have a base to any exponent and it's not surrounded by parentheses, my final answer will be negative no matter what, no matter if I have an even number or an odd number as my exponent. So let's just create our own, tweak this a little bit. What if I just had negative four to the second power? That means the opposite of four squared. Well, four squared, four times four is 16. And what's the opposite of 16? Negative 16. So look, no matter what, my final answer is gonna be negative. So anytime you do not have a base in parentheses, I know it seems insignificant, but it is significant. It means the opposite of whatever your uh, base and exponent is, meaning it's always going to be negative in that scenario. So as a final example, let's, let's create an extra one to do. Let's do this expression. Let's do negative two plus negative three cubed. In this scenario, I'm doing negative three times negative three times negative three. Why? because that value, that base is in parentheses, so that whole thing is gonna get cubed. So let's, let's write this on the side just so you can see it. Negative three times negative three times negative three. Negative three times negative three is positive nine times negative three is negative 27. So now if I'm rewriting my problem, I did the exponents first, now it's negative two plus negative 27. And when you have two numbers that have the same sign and you're adding, simply add them together and keep the sign. So $2 in debt plus $27 in debt is negative $29 of debt. And there you have it. So um, pay attention to the little details today. You have um, nine or so expressions that you're going to be simplifying. Some of them are just one single exponent problem just to see who's paying attention to the details. Uh, pay attention to those, um, ask questions as needed, and um, have a great time doing math.